the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I welcome you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to this Monday Thursday worship service. May we bow our heads and look to God in prayer. God of grace and God of compassion, we come into your presence with the hearts full of thanksgiving, O Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this great day for us to remember the Passover, the festival of our Passover, and the Lord's Supper which Jesus Christ instituted and said to remember till we meet Jesus Christ in the second coming. Yes, Lord. We give you thanks for your son Jesus Christ who came down to this earth 2000 years ago to redeem us, to cleanse us, and to purify us and bring salvation to our life, O oh Lord. Today, as believers of Christ, we have gathered in your name to be nurtured by you. So we beseech your continual presence to take care of us and lead us so that we might grow more in our faith journey. In Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. For the glory of God and to begin our worship service, let's all rise and join singing the hymn, Guide Me. O thou great Jagova, guide me, O thou great Jagova. Remain standing, let us continue worship service by following the order for the Lord's Supper found on page number 6, the CSA Book of Common Worship. Let's pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you. Unworthily bend the holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. A Lord summary of the Lord and the Prophets. A Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the great and first commandment. The second one is, you should love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. 
Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Let us enter into the act of confession. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we have come together to hear God's most holy word and to receive the body and blood of the Lord. Let us therefore kneel and examine ourselves in silence, seeking God's grace that we may draw near to Him with repentance and faith. Let us confess together. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbor. We have walked in darkness rather than in light. We have named the name of Christ, but have not departed from iniquity. Have mercy upon us. We beseech thee for the sake of Jesus Christ. Forgive us all our sins. Cleanse us by the Holy Spirit. Quicken our consciousness. Enable us to forgive others that we may hear after serve you in newness of life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from Exodus chapter 12 verses from 12 to 20. I repeat Exodus chapter 12 verses from 12 to 20. On that same night I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. A lasting ordinance. For seven days you are to eat bread made without yeast. On the first day, remove the yeast from your houses, for whoever eats anything with yeast in it from the first day through the seventh must be cut off from Israel. On the first day, hold a sacred assembly and another one on the seventh day. Do not work at all on these days, except to prepare food for everyone to eat. That is all you may do. Celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread, because it was on this very day that I brought your div divisions out of Egypt. Celebrate this day as a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. In the first month, you are to eat bread made without yeast, from the evening of the 14th day until the evening of the 21st day. For seven days, no yeast is to be found in your houses, and whoever eats anything with yeast in it must be cut off from the community of Israel whether he is an alien or native-born. Eat nothing made with yeast. Wherever you live, you must eat unleavened bread. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading is taken from John chapter 6, verse 47 to 58. John Chapter 6, verse 47 to 58. I tell you the truth, he who believes has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which a man may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. <clears throat> then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, unless you can eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. 
Your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. Here ends the reading. Remain standing. Let's join in singing the hymn, Jesus, keep me near the cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There are precious fountains free to all the healing stream. Flows from Calvary's mountain in the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the and peace to you all from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, I deem it as a great privilege and honor to stand before you and bring God's word this evening. Let's bow down and look to God in prayer. We come into your presence now to hear your word, O oh Lord. Reveal your truth so that your truth may set us free. As your servants are eagerly waiting to listen to your voice, hide me and reveal yourself so that we might grow more in our faith journey. In Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen.
friends good evening to one and all gathered in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ though we are gathered in our own home situations as the early church people they used to gather in the houses the home churches were increasing and believers were also increasing day by day so this quarantine time though we are affected by covid 19 the whole world is facing lot of difficulties we are in the time of uncertainty we don't know what is going to happen after 14th of april but then still we have a hope in god that god will redeem us from this situation today for a monday thursday meditation the theme given for us to meditate is that the life giving bread christ the life giving bread we have been constantly meditating upon the word of god christ as the main theme and the attributes and the qualities of christ we have been discussing in these lenten days for example by christ the cleansing christ the accepting christ forgiving christ liberating christ and in so many aspects of christ attributions we have discussed and we have meditated and today we are asked to meditate upon christ the life giving bread when we are hungry we move towards our kitchen and we look for a food and there is no food then we cry out and ask to our mother or to our wives or times to husbands also where is food where is the bread i have been working hard and hard during the day time when i return home i find nothing so bread is becoming very crucial and very important in our own life giving in our, in our own life circumstances jesus is the life giving bread jesus himself says that i am the bread of life and jesus takes the concept of passover and as we all know that is the it is the according to jewish customary the jewish people used to celebrate the festival of passover to remember the deliverance from egypt once in egypt they were captivated they were bonded they were they were slaves enslaved by the pharaoh and his companies but god had brought them up god the god redeemed them from their sufferings because their cry was heard in the heaven we all know very well that god sends moses and aaron to redeem the people of israelites from the land of egypt so in the old testament lesson which was read to us it clearly speaks about it clearly speaks about the redeeming act of the lord yahweh if you turn your bibles to exodus chapter 12 here we could see the first passover is instituted god is speaking to moses and god was expecting moses to instruct his own people israelites to see that they are redeemed they are safe in the suffering time
just like the same situation prevailed even in israelites lifetime their life was very much questionable they didn't have a proper clothing proper food they were afraid of their life here god comes down to redeem the people of israelites so god says i need a sign to redeem you all sign is very very important when you travel on a highway you see more sign boards you see a sign board which says which directs you to take left you see a sign board further which guides you towards your way taking a straight path and there are sign boards where you have to take u turn also here god is asking for a sign to protect his own people so lord yahweh commands moses and aaron to convey this message to israelites to redeem them take a lamb take a lamb and you sacrifice it and you burn it and you all can eat that day that night itself and when you take a lamb when you sacrifice and drops of blood should be put on the lintel of your houses and here we could see in exodus chapter 12 verse 13 the blood shall be sign for you on the houses where you live when i see the blood i will pass over you and no plague shall destroy you when i strike the land of egypt so god clearly speaks when i pass over when i see the blood the plague will not attack you i'm going to destroy the pharaoh and the egyptians with the plague but i am going to save you what a promise in word my dear brothers and sisters in christ do we have the same sign blood of christ in our houses can people identify and say that this house belongs to christians this house is washed by the blood of christ can people identify the blood of christ in our houses in our linton level if at all people can identify if at all god can see your blood or if you are washed by the blood of christ then we'll be saved many times we want to live on our own life but today we don't need to sacrifice lamb but once for all christ is getting ready to be sacrificed on the cross of calvary on this same day monday thursday jesus was preparing to take up the cup jesus says lord my father if you can remove this cup you can please remove or if you ask me to go further i will go with your help jesus crucifixion crucifixion on the cross to redeem all of us today shall we take oath that by our attitude by our own activities the people will really understand and people really know that our houses are sprinkled by the blood of christ so god say this day shall be a day of remembrance for you you shall celebrate it as a festival of the festival to the lord throughout your generations you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance this is the only festival and very important festival that god himself god god self gave commandment to all of us to all israelites and all, to all christians to celebrate so my first point i would like to hint here do we have a sign of a blood of christ 
Christ, the life giving bread, demanding from all of us to redeem us from all these situations, from these pandemic situations. Do we have the experience of sprinkling the blood of Christ in faith? Secondly, if you turn your Bibles to the epistle lesson which was read to us, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses from 23, 20, 23 to 29. Here we could see that Paul is insisting upon the worthiness. When you come to the altar, when you come before the altar, when you come prepared to take Holy Communion, the church, are we really worthy of taking part in it? Are we making ourselves worthy to take part in the Holy Communion service? Are we worthy or are we unworthy? Here Paul condemns, Paul rebukes all the nominal Christians. Paul very strictly says, when you go before the Lord Almighty, when you go before the Lord's table, see that you are made worthy. Even at times, when we come before the Lord's Supper, we just come like that. Just like that we come before the altar and then receive and get back to our places. Not really knowing why we are coming before the Lord's table. So here, Paul says, Whoever therefore eats the bread of drink, bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. If you are partaking with unworthiness, you are answerable to God. So examine yourselves and only then eat the bread and drink of the cup. We have to examine ourselves. Once what happened? There was a boy. He wanted to take up take Holy Communion. So he took part in the Holy Communion service. When the time came, he also came front to receive the body and blood of the Lord. Just like others, he also took part. And after the service was over, pastor also felt very happy that this particular boy came forward to take Holy Communion. But then, after the service is over, he called this person and asked, Why, what happened? Why is that you have taken the full wine which was in the cup? Why do you drink the full wine which was in the cup? Then he replied, Pastor, don't mistake me. I have to drink even the whole, even the whole bottle because I have committed more mistakes. I am an unworthy person. So I have to drink more wine in order to be saved. But this is not the condition that you and I have to undergo. When we come before the Lord's table, let us examine ourselves. Let us examine ourselves. Because if we are taking part with unworthiness, then we are all answerable. So the, there, were, there were a group of people in the Corinthian church who used to come before the Lord's table just for hungry, just to feed their belly, or just to take part as the nominal Christians. That's what here we read. When you come together, it is not really to eat the Lord's Supper, for when the time comes to eat, each of you goes ahead with your own supper, and go, one goes hungry, and another becomes drunk. What do you not have become? What do you not have become? 
what do you repeat what do you not have homes to eat and drink in or do you show contempt for the church of god and humiliate those who have nothing what should i say to you should i commend you this matter i don't i do not commend you so my dear friends let us examine ourselves before we take part in the holy communion or we worthy to take part in the holy communion and thirdly and lastly jesus christ he affirms very much saying that i am the bread of life here jesus stands as the life giving bread the life giving bread of christ jesus christ says very truly i tell you whoever believes has eternal life we have to eat the blood of christ we have to drink the blood of christ we have to eat the body of christ why to have eternal life to inherit the eternal life jesus says whoever eats of this bread will live forever and the bread that i will give for the life of the world is my flesh very truly i tell you unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you have no life in you so if at all you want to have a life if at all you want to have a life you should take part in the holy communion that's what we read in the gospels jesus christ says do this in remembrance of me before jesus was betrayed by judas jesus says very clearly do in remembrance of me <clears throat> so my dear friends my flesh is true my flesh is true food my blood is true drink so no more bloodshed no more slaughtering of lambs or goats that here jesus christ himself gave his life as a ransom as a sacrificial lamb he offered himself the father allowed he sent to undergo all the sufferings just for our sake so this is the bread that came down from heaven not like that which your ancestors ate the diet but the one who eats the bread will live forever the israelites they ate manna do in the wilderness the yahweh fed the israelites all the 40 years with manna that manna helped them to live temporarily and after some years some days some months all the human beings died but here christ gives us a hope that he is the bread of life he is the life giving bread and he says if you eat my blood if you if you eat my flesh if you drink my blood you will live forever which means what even after your death you have the hope that you will be resurrected like i am going to be resurrected that's what christ says we are as christians we have, we have a hope that we will be resurrected so christ says if you accept me i am the life giving bread if you accept me and eat and drink of my blood and my bread my flesh and you will live longer i'm sure that we don't want to miss the chance of living longer right we all want to live longer we ask a man or a woman do you want to die today do, do you want to die today certainly they will say no 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 i have got so many other works to be done i have to settle my children i have to settle my grandchildren i have so many things which are just to be settled 
but one thing is very very much sure my dear friends when jesus when you accept jesus as a life giving bread he is there to lead you forever and ever even to eternal life that is the promise that we you and i are gaining from the flesh and blood of christ jesus all the disciples <coughs> gathered at one place in the upper room we all know very well the upper room secrets even there are many upper room secrets are taking place nowadays at times of course we all know and jesus <coughs> had a last supper when the people were getting ready for the passover for the festival of passover disciples were asking jesus where we have to prepare a room for the passover for the passover meal and christ says go to the town and you will see a person carrying a water jar ask him and he will direct you to the master's house and you go there there will be upper room and the upper room is ready it will be prepared for us to have a passover meal the same instructions he goes the disciples disciples were able to find the person with the water jar and he leads them and finally they reach to the place where they have set right everything for the last supper and here jesus instituted the last supper so jesus says he took the bread and blessed he took the wine and blessed gave to them and saying truly i tell you one of you will betray me one who is eating with me and everybody was shocked what is this is it me is it me everybody were started to ask one another is it you or is it me is it i they began to distress to say him one after the other and everybody started saying surely not i jesus how can i betray you but jesus says no 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 there is a man who is going to betray me and then we all know the story when they were eating they took the bread the loaf of bread and the blessing it he broke it and gave to them and said take this is my body and in the end you took the cup and given thanks he gave to them and said drink all of you this is my blood of the covenant blood of the new covenant which is poured out for many truly i tell you i will never again drink of the fruit of the wine until that day when i drink it new in the kingdom of god jesus very clearly says this blood shed is not only for the hebrews not only for the jewish community not only for the gentiles but for all people but for all people for all nations the old testament commandments covenants was meant only for the jewish community only for the israelites but here this new covenant which is created out of the blood of christ is poured out for many irrespective of caste color creed nations so christ can save anybody you cannot limit you cannot put a barricade and say no you cannot cross this boundary because christ expects everybody to be included christ kingdom is inclusive community not an exclusive community that's why jesus christ says i am the life giving bread i am the bread of life so the life giving bread very much gives us assurance that we can have life not only now but also 
life after death. Then we all know the story that Jesus and disciples they are going to the Gethsemane for a prayer. Jesus wanted to spend some time in prayer before he will be betrayed. And we all know very well the whole company is coming down to the Gethsemane. The soldiers are there, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the priests are there. It is the religious community which wanted to kill Jesus. It is not the political people. Understand? It is the religious people who wanted to kill Jesus here. They are coming and they are arresting Jesus at the Gethsemane. Even in that situation, we all know Peter takes a knife and cuts the ear of the soldier. But Jesus said, put your knife into the cover. Even he was about to take up the cup of the suffering. Jesus was able to forgive others. Because Jesus is life giving bread. So, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we should have a sign for Jesus to encounter with us, to protect us, and to redeem us from this pandemic situation. And if at all Christ want to redeem us, we should see whether we are worthily taking part in the Holy Communion. If you check ourselves, whether we are worthy to be called as children of God. And thirdly, Jesus is the life-giving bread. Shall we burn our heads and look to God in prayer? Gracious God and loving Father, the author of Souls and Living, thank you Lord for your word that comes to us this day. Help us to understand a more better way that we all continuously trying to understand the importance of salvation. Jesus Christ came down to this earth to redeem all nations, all people. Yes, Lord. Help us to take out, take up the same task, carry the gospel, proclaim the gospel of Christ to everyone. That Christ, Jesus Christ, died not only for us, but for the whole world. In Christ's mighty name, we pray. Amen. Shall we all rise and affirm our faith by saying the Nicene Creed together? Let's all affirm our faith by saying the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, a one being with the Father, through Him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, with the power of the Holy Spirit, He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death, thus buried, 
the third day rose again in accordance with the scriptures he ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end we believe in one holy catholic and apostolic church we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins we look for the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come amen remain standing let us join in singing the hymn when i survey the wondrous cross when i survey the wondrous cross service let us continue to follow the holy communion service the breaking of the bread how very good and pleasant it is when people of god live together in unity we who are many are one body for we all partake of the one bread now i will offer in his head in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy i will sing and make melody to the lord shall we all kneel and say the prayer of presence together be present be present oh jesus you good i praised as you were in the midst of your disciples and make yourself known to us the breaking of the bread who lives and reigns with the father and the holy spirit one god world without end amen the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to our lord god it is right to give our thanks and praise it is indeed right our duty and highest joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you o lord holy almighty and everlasting god through jesus christ your son our lord through whom you created the heavens and the earth and all that is in them and made human kind in your own image and when it had fallen into sin 
you redeemed it to be the first fruits of a new creation therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we lord and magnify your holy glorious name ever more praising you and saying holy holy lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory glory be to you o lord most high blessed is he that has come and is to come in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest truly holy truly blessed are you o god our savior who of your tender love towards human kind gave your only son jesus christ to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for redemption who made that by his oblation of himself once offered a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice oblation satisfactory for the sins of the whole world and instituted in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again who in the same night when he was betrayed took bread after having given thanks broke it and gave to disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me likewise after supper he took the cup and after after had given thanks he gave to them saying drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me amen your death o lord we commemorate your resurrection we confess and your coming we await glory be to you o christ therefore o lord our god remembering the precious death and passion and glorious resurrection and ascension of your son our lord we your servants do this in remembrance of him as he commanded until his coming again giving thanks to you for the perfect redemption which you have brought about for us in him we give thanks to you we praise you we glorify you o lord our god and we most humbly ask you o merciful god to sanctify with your holy spirit us and these your own gifts of bread and wine for the bread which we break may be the communion of the body of christ the cup which we bless the communion of the blood of christ grant that being joined together in him we may all attain to the unity of the faith and may grow up in all things unto him who is the head even christ our lord by whom and with whom the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory be yours o god almighty world without end amen as the savior christ has taught us so we pray our father in heaven holy be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen let's all kneel for the prayer of humble access and say together we do not presume to come to this your table merciful lord trusting in our own righteousness but in your manifold and great mercies we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs from from under your table but you are the same lord whose nature is always to have mercy grant us therefore gracious lord so to eat the flesh of your dear son jesus christ and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies and souls may be made clean by his most precious body and blood and that we may ever more dwell in him he in us amen
when we break the bread do we not share in the body of christ when we lift the cup do we not share in the life blood of christ o lamb of god you take care of the sins of the world have mercy on us o lamb of god you take care of the sins of the world have mercy on us o lamb of god you take care of the sin of the world grant us your peace now we may partake thanksgiving meal which is consecrated at your home having now by faith received the sacrament of the body and blood of Christ let us give thanks o gracious god you have fed us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your son our savior jesus christ you you have assured us in these holy mysteries of your favor and goodness towards us and that we are living members of the body of your son and heirs of your eternal kingdom for these great benefits we thank you and in union with your son we offer you ourselves as a living sacrifice now lord send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of christ our lord amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our god for ever and ever amen kindly stand for the benediction the peace of god which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of god and of his son jesus christ our lord the blessing of god almighty the father son and the holy spirit be amongst you and remain with you always